And for example, three, we're really going to look at moving to part B at the beginning. You can create a table of values for y equals log 2 of x. It might be easy. Again, you could start with a quick graph of log 2 of x. You know it has that asymptote at x equals 0. All log graphs go through the point 1 comma 0. And because the base is 2, you'd have 2 comma 1. And if we wanted to make a table of values, we've already got two points on there, 1 comma 0, 2 comma 1. If you wanted some more points, remember that logs solve for exponents. Log 2 of x is saying 2 to what exponent would equal x? So if I put in 4 for x, the exponent would be 2. 2 squared is 4. If I put in 8 for x, the exponent would be 3. So we could add more values if we'd like to. Now we're going to not listen to all of their instructions on this next one. I'm going to do this on a separate grid. so that it's easier to compare. You've already graphed y equals log base 2 of x here. We now want to graph log base 2 of 2x minus 1. And so when you're graphing a log function, just like graphing an exponential function, the first thing you have to realize is what's the parent graph. We know that the parent graph of this one is y log base 2 of x. And so if I put a green box around the parent stuff, the log base 2 of x, I do that so we don't think that extra base does an extra transformation. That's my parent graph. Now looking, what will this 2 do? Vertical or horizontal? Stretch, compression, reflection, translation. Is it where the x is? Yes. So it's going to be horizontal. We're multiplying by 2, so this will be a horizontal compression. You're going to multiply all your x values by a half. Now that minus 1, if they wanted it inside with the x, they would have put brackets around the whole thing. So this minus 1 right here is a vertical translation 1 down. And we go about graphing transformations with logs in the same way that we did our transformations in the transformations unit. We had two key points that we knew on our parent graph. We knew that we had on our original graph 1 comma 0, because all log graphs have 1 comma 0, and we had 2 comma 1. We're also going to see what happens to our vertical asymptote at x equals 0. But we'll do the point first, and remember we do stretches and compressions first, then all of our translations. We only have one stretch compression, that is multiplying x by a half. And we only have one translation, that's moving things one down. So if I multiply my x values by a half, and then move things one down, my points become 1 half, negative 1, and 1 comma 0. Now with vertical and horizontal asymptotes, the only thing that's going to affect them are translations. And with a vertical asymptote at x equals 0, moving it up and down keeps it at x equals 0. Only if I move it left and right will it change. But in this case, I'm only moving it up and down, so this asymptote 
is still going to be at x equals 0. I can now set up my graph, draw my asymptote first, still at x equals 0, label my points. I have a point at 1 comma 0 and 1 half comma negative 1. Shape stays the same as before and we've drawn our graph. It said identify the intercept, so we can see from our graph that we know that our x-intercept is at 1, 0. There are no y-intercepts. We have an asymptote at x equals 0. State the domain and range. Domain is x is bigger than 0. Our range is everything. If you were using interval notation for x is bigger than 0, you'd have to use a round bracket at 0 because that value is not included. So now I'd like you to turn to page 400 because we're going to do a couple more examples together with graphing logarithms. So page 400 is a blank page and we'll just add two more graphing examples. So the first one, we're going to graph y equals 4 log base 3 of x plus 1 minus 5. So to start off with, our job is to go, do I know what the parent graph is? What's my base graph? My base graph, my parent graph is log base 3 of x. So off to the side, I might draw a quick little graph of what it looks like. I know it has 1 comma 0. Since it's a base 3, it has 3 comma 1. And I have my log base 3 graph. I might go to my original equation then and sort of say, okay, this, that's my original function. So that 3 is not going to be a transformation. As I go from left to right and label things, that means the first thing I have is a 4. That 4 is a vertical stretch. We're going to multiply our y values by 4. Next number we run into is the 1. Horizontal translation, 1 to the left. And vertical translation, 5 down. Now that we have those labeled, we can set up 1, 0, 3, comma, 1, arrow, arrow, stretches and compressions first. In this one, we only have the one stretch, y by 4. Then translations, we have two. We need to go one to the left and five down. Multiply your y values by 4, 1 comma 0, 3 comma 4. Move them one to the left, 0 and 2. Move them 5 down, negative 5, negative 1. This time our asymptote is going to change, right? Vertical asymptotes only going to affect if you move it left or right. We do move 1 to the left, so it becomes x equals negative 1. I think many of you would like to rewrite your transformations test at the end of the year and you'd be like, wow, that's the easiest unit because we keep going back to it and doing it over and over again. So you've, so you've probably gotten really good at it. 
So we can start by labeling our asymptote at x equals negative 1, labeling our points. We've got the point 0, negative 5. No, that's not the next point. Zero, negative five, and two, negative one. Now this is our final graph. One thing that is always required for you to figure out on log graphs is your x and y intercepts. So this one's going to be a little bit tricky to figure out. How do we find an x intercept? Get y equal to 0. So I'm going to go back to my original equation. And we get 0 equals oops, keep it blue. 4 log 3 of x plus 1 minus 5. For solving this, we need to get x by itself. Okay. Right now, we'll start by getting the logarithm by itself. Because if we can get the logarithm by itself, then we can change it to exponential form, which is something you're more familiar with. Right now, looking at this, this doesn't look like something that we would be familiar with at all. So I'm going to move the 5 over and divide by 4 to get the log by itself. If I do that, I can now change to exponential form. The base is 3. Log solve for exponents, so my exponent is 5 fourths equals x plus 1. And although that looks weird, because you don't normally have exponents of 5 fourths, now how hard is it to solve for x? Not hard at all. All you need to do is subtract 1. And so we get x is equal to 3 to the 5 fourths minus 1. If we want to find out what that value is exactly, You can type it into our calculator, 2.95. So I can label this point is at 2.95 comma 0. Now because graphing logarithms is often on the non-calculator part of the exam, to avoid you just using your graphing calculator to find the answer, they will most likely give you one where the x-intercept solves really nicely. This one, we had to use our calculator to figure that out. They would give you one where the value works out perfectly in your transformations or in solving it is a nice number. Okay, so there is example number one. We'll do one more graphing one together, and then you'll have some time to try some on your own. So the second example we're going to graph together. Graph y equals 2 natural log of 1 half x plus 2 minus 3. Off to the side, do we know what the parent graph is? y equals the natural log of x. So we can draw a quick sketch of that asymptote at x equals 0. All log graphs have the point 1 comma 0. And this one will have e comma 1. Lots of twos in here. First two, 
is going to be? Vertical stretch, one half is going to be? Horizontal stretch, what will the plus two do? How many? Four to the left, good. Why is it four to the left? Oh, this is one of these ones you have to factor first. How tempting will you be to say two to the left? Very tempted. So we have to take the time to rewrite this one in factored form. Factor out the one half. Now, when factoring out a one half, because factoring out fractions is more difficult than factoring out whole numbers, think to yourself, what would I have to be here to get that two back originally? And maybe then you can say, oh, it makes sense that it has to be a four, because a half times four is two. That might be easier than saying, how do I take a half out of two? But if you want to think about taking a half out of two, it's not actually that bad. How many halves do you need to add up to get to two? You need four of them. How many 500 mil bottles fit in a two liter bottle? Four of them. There's four halves in two. And then we still have minus three at the end. So now we can label each of these things. This is our vertical stretch, y by two. Horizontal stretch, x by two. Horizontal translation, four to the left. And a vertical translation, three down. And although there are a lot of things going on, the process stays exactly the same as before. You take your original points and your original asymptote. You do stretches and compressions first, and then your translations. So above here, we can say we need to multiply our y values by 2, our x values by 2. We're going to go 4 to the left and 3 down. Where do these points end up? x by 2, you'd have 2 and 2e. y by 2, still have 0. And 2, 4 to the left, 2 minus 4 would be negative 2. 4 to the left with 2e, the best you could do is go 2e minus 4. 3 down, minus 3, 3 down, minus 1. We're moving things 4 to the left. That will change your asymptote. Your asymptote will now be at x equals negative 4. So now we have enough information to draw our new graph. Start with your asymptote at x equals negative 4. We have a point, start with the easy point to label, negative 2, negative 3. Then we'll graph the not so easy point to label. Roughly, what is E? 2.7, 1828, 1828, there's nine decimal places again. Um, 2.7 times 2, mental math would be 5.4. 5.4 minus 4 would be 1.4. So we need to label the point at 1.4 comma negative 1. Estimate where 1.4 would be and still label this as 2e minus 4 comma negative 1. Now we have enough information here. To draw our graph, we have two more points that we're going to need to label. This one does have a y-intercept and an x-intercept. How do you find a y-intercept? Plug in 0 for x. The y-intercept is always the easiest one. So we look at our original equation, which y equals 2 
natural log of 1 half times 0 plus 2. Natural log of 2 minus, is it 3? There is your y-intercept. Again, not a very nice number. We could find out what it is exactly by going 2 natural log of 2 minus 3. See how close we were in our graph? Negative 1.6. Hey, not bad. There we go. Grab that. Perfect. Negative one point six, comma zero. Oops. Zero, comma negative one point six. You ever do that? Label your points in the wrong way? Yes, because I'm your teacher and you ta I taught you that? Great. 0, comma, negative 1.6. And now the harder one, we're going to need to find our y-intercept. How do we find a y-intercept? No, we found the y-intercept. <sighs> How do we find our x-intercept? We plug in 0 for y. So 0 equals 2 natural log of... 1 half x plus 2 minus 3. So just like before, we're going to want to get our natural log by itself so we can use the definition to change it to exponential form. So I'm going to move the 3 over and divide by 2. Now I've got my natural log by itself. Again, on a non-calculator 1, they're not likely going to give you these because you need a calculator in the end. But we can still, we could have still said, oh, my y-intercept is 0, comma 2 natural log of 2 minus 3. And I have no idea where that is, but I can label it. And same thing here. Now that we've got a single logarithm, what's the base of the natural log? E. What's the exponent? 3 halves. What's the answer? 1 half x plus 2. If you were solving this, you want to get x by itself, what would you do first? Subtract 2 on both sides. How would I get rid of that half? Multiply both sides by 2. If I multiply this whole side by 2, I'm going to get 2e to the 3 halves minus 4 equals x. Again, that's a number that we don't necessarily look at and go, oh, I know exactly where that is. Let's go to our calculator to find out what that value is. 2e to the exponent of 3 divided by 2 minus 4. Four point nine six. That's exactly where I labeled it. Look at that. Look how close that was to being perfect. Like amazing. Four point nine six comma zero. So the graphing ones for you to practice. Eight, nine, ten, and eleven.